Hello everyone. In this video, we're looking at this thing, and this is a Graugear M2 clone station. This is a desktop external storage station with dual SSDs in them that offers a unique offline cloning capability. So let's find out what this thing is capable of. First of all, I want to say thanks to Grau Gear for sending me this unit for a review. They also send me this fantastic USB 4 enclosure. And if you're interested for a review of this unit, check my channel or wait until the end of this video for a link. Okay, back to the clone station. So this is a USB 3.2 um, clone station for two M2 NVMe SSDs. And this pretty box includes the base station the glass, um, well, plastic circular tower cover, a USB 3.2 and a power cables, cleaning tissues to prepare your drives before installation, two thermal pads, two aluminum heat sinks, and instructions and warranty cards, of course. The installation process is super simple. You need to clean the SSD drives, install the thermal pads, place the heat sinks on top of them, and secure them with the included rubber belts. After that, you take the drives, plug th them into the base, Put the glass cover on and it's ready to go. On the base cover you will see the markings for the source and the target SSDs. This is important for the clone functionality that I will cover a bit later in the video. And another important bit of information, if your SSD drive already has a heatsink on, you can also plug it in into the uh, base station. The clearance of the base station allows for it. Okay, now let's talk about the performance of this station. The enclosure works as a dual drive station, basically allowing you to access both SSDs with one USB cable. The enclosure is USB 3.2, so don't expect blazing speeds like with USB 4. However, uh, it is still plenty for normal work. So in Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, I got 957 megabytes per second for writes and 927 megabytes per second for reads, which is enough and plenty to work uh, for daily tasks, uh, working with media files, working with videos. It is still a good uh, speed that you can get. I used Crucial P3 Plus SSD drives. You might get faster speeds with, uh, for example, Western Digital SN850X, However, I wouldn't hold my breath because you would still be limited by the uh, USB 3.2 standard. Testing it for normal file transfer speeds, I managed to get a 20 gigabyte uh, folder to it in 21 and a half seconds and 102 gigabyte uh, folder in 1 minute 52 seconds. And if you watched my older video about this Grau Gear USB 4 enclosure, then you probably would remember that uh, for that, the respective numbers were 5 seconds and 31 seconds. A unique functionality of uh, this thing is it, it allows you to fully copy one SSD onto the other. So this functionality is not available when it is connected to the computer. For that, you have to unplug the USB uh, cable first. After that, it should still be powered on and you need to press this dedicated clone button once and hold it until the uh, LEDs with the percentages will start to blink. After that, you release it, hold it again until the 25% LED will start uh, blink once more, and that basically starts the whole cloning process. For this one terabyte Crucial P3 Plus SSD, uh, so I have two of them, the whole cloning process took around 46 minutes from start to finish. And you might be wondering if, it, if it's a little bit too long, but you must remember two things. First, the whole cloning process happens not through your computer, but on this little clone station itself. And second, it copies the whole SSD uh, onto the other. So every byte of one SSD gets copied onto uh, the other SSD fully, providing identical copies. 
Grau Gear themselves point out that the expected speed when the station is connected to PC is 20 gigabit per second, but for the cloning speed, the, it is only 10 gigabit per second. So where this functionality would be interesting for you? Well, if you boot from an SSD drive, for example, in your PC, it might be a convenient way to back up your uh, boot drive in case it something happens to it or it just dies on you and then you can always have a backup in place. Alternatively, I imagine that if you have a home server like I do, it would be a nice opportunity to have just one backup uh, SSD drive in place so that if my home server dies, I can still have all my settings ready and I would not bother with restoring the backup settings onto the uh, new drive that I would have to replace it with. Just remember that for the cloning process, the drives should be exactly the same size or the target drive should be at least bigger than the, uh, the source drive for the cloning process to uh, complete. And maybe an interesting point there, uh, when your station is mounted to your uh, computer, there is no way to say what SSD is in the target slot or what SSD is in the uh, source slot unless you go into the disk utility and you actually know which bus is uh, allocated to which uh, slot. So perhaps if you will get this station, when you initialize this, uh, the drives, mark them in a specific way and also perhaps mark them visually in the station itself. So the practicality of the cloning functionality is up for debate. Myself, I don't think I would ever use it. However, I can see a use case for people for whom having an operational well, home server or gaming PC is a necessity, for example, a Twitch streamer, and they can easily make a copy of their main uh, boot drive for their main machine, just in case if something happens with their main uh, boot SSD drive, they can always plug the back backup in or perhaps plug it in a replacement or a, a new machine and they will all have their settings, their games uh, ready to go. Now, I want to say something about how this thing looks and sounds. Um, for the looks, it's definitely a very beautiful piece of equipment. There is this matte uh, plastic here. I don't see any smudges from my fingers, so it's pretty clean. When it's on together with this plastic cover, and the blue LED lights, it gives this very nice high-tech futuristic look. So in a nutshell, this clone station is super pretty and it's definitely pleasing to look at it standing at your desk. The lights on the base also correspond to the strength of the uh, fan curve. So the fan goes from totally off to medium and high settings and the LED in the base are brightest when the fan is turned to its higher settings and are completely off when the fan is off. Now the cooling performance of the fan in this thing is very good. When, um, the, when the drives were under load, so I continuously copied a lot of files onto them for 20 minutes. Um, when the fan was on its higher settings, the, fan, the SSDs only reached approximately 28 degrees on the surface. And I understand why, because basically uh, it's an open design. Uh, the air goes from the base through the uh, plastic cover up, so it cools them very efficiently. Um, I turned the fan off and then the temperature started to go um, up until their 40s and continued to rise, but never reached uh, 50 degrees. I also understand that it's probably difficult to really heat them up when it's essentially uh, an open station and there is still air uh, around it. Perhaps you can get this thing even hotter. As I said, I use Crucial P3 SSD drives and maybe with a more high performance drive um, you can get higher temperatures. But with this open design, I don't think you will ever have a problem of uh, SSD drives overheating and just in case you can always put the fan on the medium um, and it will cool it just fine. So, in conclusion, I must say I really like this clone station. It is performant, it looks nice on your desk, it cools your SSDs very efficiently, 
and you can plug not one but two SSDs there. So for example, you can even have eight terabyte of storage there, which is quite nice. From the facts that you probably should consider uh, if you're thinking about buying it, you should understand that this is, well, a station. So it has two connections, uh, one USB and another one to the electricity. It doesn't power itself from the USB port. Uh, it is also not portable, right? So it should stay on your desk. You cannot put it in your bag and take it on a trip or uh, to your work. And another point, of course, is that it is a USB 3.2. So I'm looking forward when Grau Gear will make those in USB 4 standard. That would be a very interesting product to have and review. So I hope you found this video interesting. Thanks again to Grau Gear for sending me uh, this unit for a review. And as always, I will see you in the next video.